Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here and this week I'm going to show you how to transform this woman into a vampire. So welcome to this week's tutorial. I'm just going to jump right in and start transforming this woman into a vampire. So the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of cut out and isolate her skin. So let's start with that. We're just going to grab the quick select tool here. And I'm just going to go over and start selecting it. Now, usually what happens is you're going to over select and then just come back and clean it up using the Alt or the Option key. Seems to work well for me. Now, just to let you know, I'm using a pressure sensitive Wacom tablet. So um, as I'm pressing lighter, it's doing a more fine selection. As I'm pressing harder, it's doing a more stronger selection. So I'm just hitting the Option key right now and I'm just painting back in the areas I want. My hand is off the option now, and I'm just selecting around the skin here. So let's grab this hair. So we're hitting the option key once again, and we're just going in there and selecting it. Now this part can be a little bit tedious. I'm not going to take a ton of time to do this, but we're going to get pretty close. All right, that's not bad. That's looking pretty good. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to click on Select and Mask. So under the Select and Mask, we can actually really refine this. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a feather. Now, it's not something I do a lot, to be honest with you. I don't very often feather my selections, but in this case, I think it's going to work quite well. And then we're just going to go down and make sure we go to New Layer with Layer Mask right there. And then we're just going to pop it open. Okay, so there we go. We've got that selection. That's her skin and uh, underneath there's everything else so i'm going to actually select this layer underneath i want to darken her hair give her kind of like a deeper red kind of a hair so we're going to go into curves now to hit curves we're just going to open up the curves here and let me just pop the curves out into the middle there we go and then we're going to go into the three quarter shadow region and we're going to pull this down and we're just darkening it down a little bit see how that gives you darker hair and we're just going to pop up this bit and that just kind of boosts the red a little bit and let me just get down a bit more there we go and we're even going to go into the reds and let's give it a little boost in the reds there we go give us some redder hair and let me just go back to rgb again and just playing around trying to get the right feel okay that looks pretty good i'm happy with that so if we look at this there's the hair before and after just gives frames the face a little bit stronger and also notice um, that because I popped the skin onto the layer above this is what it would look like if we were adjusting it all together but in this case we didn't I just wanted to darken that hair all right so let's go in what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go in and grab a hue saturation and all I'm gonna do is take the saturation and pull it down because what I want to do is I want to take the color out of the skin now I don't want to go all the way to black and white I'm going to go to about there. So we've got a little color, but not a ton of it. Now notice it's affecting everything, including our hair. So if you see this little clipping button here that's in the properties panel, you click on there and what it does is it clips it to that layer. Now you can do the same thing with the Alt or the Option key. So when you've got an adjustment layer, hit the Alt or the Option and then click there and it will clip it directly to the layer underneath. All right, so that's great. So we've got that kind of vampirish looking um, kind of skin and color and stuff there. That's good. That's a good start. Now, it's not menacing at all. We've got some other things we need to do here. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to make this face just a little bit more interesting, a little bit more sinister. So we're going to go and we're going to select on the face here. And now we're going to go under liquify. So we're going to choose filter liquify. And let's play around with this a little bit. So one of the things I want to do is maybe drop the eye height down a little bit. So she kind of looks like she's squinting a little bit more. So it looks like just a little bit more menacing that way. And let's make those eyes a little wider. Make them slightly smaller. We don't want them too big. And then what we're going to do is take the tilt. And then we're going to tilt these down to kind of make it look just a little bit more sinister. And the eye direction. Let's keep them nice and far apart. And maybe I'm going to take the height down a little bit more. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. Okay, so let's have a look at the mouth here. We want to make this mouth a little bit more menacing as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the smile and we're going to pull it down a little bit into a slightly bit of a frown. 
and let's make that mouth a little bit wider because you know we're vampires that's where the fangs are so I want to really bring attention to that it's looking pretty good all right so let's have a look let's narrow the nose down a little bit and let's come down a little bit more here let's bring the forehead down just a touch and what I'm going to do too is I want to make the jawline see we can make that narrow then I can make it a little bit thinner because you know she's a vampire she's not um, you know well nourished eating a lot of vegetables and stuff and I'm also going to narrow the face down it just makes it look that little bit more sinister all right so that's looking good so we're just going to click OK to apply that and notice now so if we look at that before and after you can see she's definitely got more of a sinister look going on all right so what we're going to do now is some coloring I want to bring back some red into those lips so remember this hue and saturation took away the color so let's click on the layer mask which is the white area I'm going to grab the brush make sure I'm grabbing black as the foreground opacity all the way to 100 and I want to make a pretty hard edged brush I'm not going to go all the way hard maybe at about 94 is pretty good and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit the right bracket key to make it bigger and I'm just going to paint on that layer and let some of that color come back through see so that's what I'm doing there just letting that color in for those lips yeah it's looking pretty good now I could make those lips a little bit redder if I wanted and why don't I do that so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna control click to make a selection notice what I did is I control clicked on that mask there and I selected that area but I want to inverse it because notice everything is selected so I'm gonna go under select inverse or command shift I but let's go down to select inverse see command shift I or control shift I and now we just got the lips area so let's go to the layer underneath so we're looking underneath there that's our layer we're now working on the original image and I'm gonna hit control U for hue saturation and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a little boost to saturation there take the lightness down actually let's leave that lightness it's not looking good let's play around a little bit with the lips maybe go that way slightly so I'm just trying to make them look a little bit redder I don't want to go all the way there because that looks so fake just give it a little boost click OK control D and there we go that's definitely looking a little bit better alright so the next thing we want to do is we want to work on these eyes we want to make these eyes look more vampirish so I'm gonna make a selection around here using the elliptical marquee tool and I'm using the um, I'm holding the shift key to constrain that to a circle and I'm using the space bar to move it around all right I've selected that one eye now I'm gonna hold the shift key and that will add to the selection and I'm gonna pull out another circle and I'm also going to hit the space bar to reposition that and I'm just sizing it so I'm just tapping on that space bar to move it releasing the space bar to size it all right those are those two eyes that's great now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my hue saturation adjustment layer there and I'm just going to fill these with black so that's control I should be alt backspace or option delete and then what that's doing there is it's just allowing me to get the color in just in that area there so um, by turning that mask off and showing the color underneath now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some curves here and I'm gonna give these some color so let's go into the adjustment layer with that still selected and we're gonna go up here and we're gonna grab the curves adjustment layer so now just the eyes are gonna be adjusted because those are the ones that are selected so let's just pull down a little bit let's darken them down a little bit that's already looking a lot better but we got to play around with some color we want some real kind of vampire color going on here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the blue and I'm gonna reduce the blue a little bit yeah that's starting to get somewhere and I'm gonna give the red a bit of a boost there and that's getting pretty close to what you see sometimes for the vampire colored eyes sometimes you see them more red and if that was the case if I wanted to go more red I just wouldn't pull that blue down and I would pull the red up a little bit more and sometimes they get a little yellow uh, but it's you know I think about there is looking pretty good for the color I like that all right so we've got a few more things to do here we're almost there as far as you know creating the coloring and stuff like that 
but the big thing that's really going to give us this vampire feel now is the makeup so what we want to do is darken around these eyes so i'm going to create a new layer and i'm just going to change this to overlay and now i'm going to grab a brush make sure we've got black selected as the foreground color and i'm going to make this a soft edge brush and I'm gonna pull the opacity down to 50% by hitting the five key on the keyboard, or you can just scroll down there. And if you're using a mouse, I'd take that down to around maybe 10 to 20% and slowly build this up. I'm gonna hit 50% because I'm using a pressure sensitive tablet. So let me just go away from there, hit the five key once again. And let's open up the brushes panel. Well, actually the brushes panel is right there. So I wanna make sure shape dynamics is turned off, transfer, I want to make sure that that is set there to pen pressure. So that means that I can paint using pen pressure, you know, like you would with a pencil. And I'm going to grab a bigger kind of a brush here, and I'm just very gently, and you might do this at like maybe 10% if you're using a mouse. I'm just going around just to just darken around the eyes just a little bit. Just creating an overall mood. Not going heavy or anything yet, just creating a mood. And notice I'm just slowly building this up. I'm not trying to rush. I'm not trying to apply this right away in one go. And that really is the key to this kind of thing, is just take your time and just gently add it on. All right, so now I'm going to go down to a smaller brush. And I'm going to start to apply a little darker under the eyes there and a little darker over the eyes. And if you look at a lot of the vampire makeup that they use, you'll notice that very, very dark around the eyes. It kind of adds to that kind of sinister look. So we're just kind of darkening around there. Good. Okay, let's go a slightly bigger brush again. And I'm just kind of blending this in. And notice I'm going a little further outside of that area now. Just gently blending this in. And you get the general idea here. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding that makeup around there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, something you probably wouldn't do too much on real makeup, and just darken right in here. Uh, but this is what we would do for vampire makeup. All right, that's starting to look a lot better. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add just a little bit of red in there. So let's go in there. We're gonna grab some red, some darker red. And I'm just gonna drop this opacity down to maybe 20%. I just tapped the two key to do that. I'm just gonna give this just blending and just a slight touch of red on the top and the bottom. There we go. And that starts to give it more of that kind of vampirish feel. There we go. All right, so we didn't get too carried away with the red. We just very, very gently put that in. And we can see that we're getting much, much closer. All right, what I'm going to do now is I want to really give this a bit of a boost here by um, adding some curves into here. So I'm just, just grab the curves again. So we're just going to grab a curves adjustment layer on the very top. And then we're just going to pull down a little bit in the shadows to kind of give it some definition. There we go. Look at that. And then we're going to go in the highlights and maybe just pop it up just a little bit. So we're increasing the contrast, making this a very, very kind of contrasty image. And that's looking good. And let me just check something. Yeah, I'm thinking right in there, I'm going to hit the black brush here. And one of the things I'm going to experiment with really quickly is I want to see if I can just paint away the eyes. Let's zoom in a little bit on these eyes. Grab a small brush and I'm just going to go around those edge to make those eyes a little bit lighter in those areas right there. Just around the irises. Not in the pupil, but just around the iris. Let's have a look at our before. There we go. We've got the nice, sweet, innocent girl. And now we've got this vampire. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, 
please hit the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew. I've got new tutorials that I'm doing every single week. If you're really serious about Photoshop and Lightroom and different gadgets and things like that, become part of the cafe crew by hitting that subscribe button. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, add a comment, you know, hit the like button. If you like this, let me know what kind of tutorials you'd like. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.